How long have you been chasing me, Wolfkist? Seventeen winters? Eighteen? Do I now haunt your dreams? Do I warm your loins? <laughs> you remember this? Ah, oh, your father's axe. The weapon of a coward. A scorn snake. Ah, few things would please me more than to kill with this blade. But I know you would defy me to the death, fighting for a glorious end. That I will not allow. You will live your final days enthralled as a slave. Humiliated. Your death will be a lonely one. <laughs> Kill the rest of his crew! Make them suffer! Ava Wolfkist is no more! That name is dead to this world! You will be worth your weight in silver. Who <laughs> uh, the shit? Uh. I take your uh, eyes, you hear me? Uh, Wind's blowing from the south. We can tack north, then cut west. Now, what did I just tell you? Uh, uh, uh. Hide them well. He will heal, but never fully recover. It is fortunate that you were able to succeed where he failed. My resolve was strong. When you slew Kyotve, did you see a sigil on him? Silver, the size of my palm, bearing the symbol of an ash tree? Take it. Trade it for what you can. I know where Gorm is camped. If you wish to see him without anyone the wiser, there is a trick I can teach you. Already looking for another princess? All right, I'll bite. What do I do? Use your cloak to obscure your face. Blend into the crowd. Divert attention. Hide in plain sight. A gift of knowledge from a man I hardly know. Is this your way of asking me to join your brotherhood? Not at all. So long as men and women fight to secure honor and freedom, the religions hardly matters to me. I suppose there's no shame in using deception when honor is at stake. And Gorham is a stain on that honor. Then let's see what can be done to cleanse that stain. Give it a try. Nessa, is it? I'm Eivor. Randvi said you would be my guide. That is right. Passage to across the seas to St. Brenton's land, is that right? Randvi called it Vinland. One and the same. It is a three-week trip by longship. Arduous, dull, possibly fatal. Should we survive, you will be compensated. Eivor, before you go, you must be dressed as a thrall when you arrive. To be seen as you are would raise suspicions. Gorm runs this new camp. And it is a good bet all but a few will be loyal to him. Good thinking. Only taking care of our prize Drenger. First things first, Eivor. My ship, my rules. Second, you follow the rules. Third, if you listen to my rules, you live. Understood. Good. Let me know when you're ready and we'll get going.
Someone in charge. I had better step with care. No friends here. You! You look stronger than most of the others. What's your name? Yora of Jorvik. Yora? As in horse? My father never wanted children. What is this place? Newhaven. A wild place found on no map. Are we settling here? That is not our plan. Too many wild folk in the woods. They threaten us? You ask too many questions, horse. Your task is to keep your mouth shut and do as I tell you. Now, unload that ship and then I'll have you carry those carrots. Hildi! 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 We can't find Olaf. Look, he's ours. Not again. We cannot send supplies to Gorm without his guidance. Ugh! Pull what supplies we have to the nearest camps, then. Gorm's men will do the rest. Let me go. I can carry whatever supplies Gorm needs. That's Olaf's job, horse. Not yours. You stick to this port and keep your head down. Ask around about Olaf. Someone must know where he has run off to. A story of betrayal. Of selfish malice. And of gods who act as spoiled children. Of all our many gods, it is Odin who is the most revered. He is the All-Father, the High One, the Wise King. But for all his glories, he can also be the most elusive of his kind. Selfish, solitary, stubborn, even cruel. In days long gone, it came to pass that Odin's son, Balder, died suddenly, felled by his only weakness, Mistletoe. Believing his son's death an accident, Odin sent a message to the Jotun Hel, asking her to return his beautiful boy to life. Hel agreed, but on one condition. Only if every living creature in the Nine Worlds shed a loving tear for Baldur. At once, Odin sent word to every corner of the world, asking all to weep for his beloved boy. And all did. But one. A Jotun named Thok refused to cry for Baldur. Let Hel keep what she has received, Thok said, with malice. And that was that. Baldur was gone forever, sent on a funeral ship across the sea, buried in Midgard, amid trees and rocks. What Odin did not know is that Thok was none other than the trickster Loki in disguise, a god he knew as a friend. Worse still, it was Loki who led Baldur to his death by a sprick of mistletoe. All these tricks and feints Loki had conceived. Some say it was in Loki's nature to be so cruel. Others argue it was revenge for deeds done by Odin to Loki and his children. There is a third view, that all these acts, kind and cruel, were sown long ago in the pattern of their lives. That we are not the authors of our own destiny, but only its readers, and that we... Oh... <laughs> uh, that we should fight against this view, for it is deeply unwelcome. As a pledge of faith, you may take my hand if I am untrue. Be swift, Harvey. Die. To see. 
Deceiver! I could not strike the killing blow. All my oaths remain unbroken. Anyone lesser would have succumbed to his hatred. If I could have done this any other way... There was no other way, Harvey. Our fates are fixed. Fate, I know. You made a great sacrifice on my behalf. It was not for you. Do not think your kindness has made you a new friend, Lord of Imbeciles. I will kill you, all of you, gorging on Aesir flesh. You may strike the final blow, son of Loki, but I will savor my years of freedom before we meet again. <laughs> Come, old friend. The healing hands of Freya can help you.